When you're a star, everybody wants to be your friend. But the average Jane and Joe rarely get to rub elbows with their idols in real life. Whether for a day, a week, or even years, these celebs actually became friends with one of their biggest fans. Sometimes a whole lot of moxie and a little good timing can help you go from fan to friend. Just ask Nicole Muxo, who made a Twitter video asking her favorite baller to her senior prom in 2013. Hey, it's Wayne Wayne. My name's Nicole. My senior prom is coming up and I have everything set for a perfect night except for one thing, a perfect date. Muxo sent Miami Heat star Dwayne Wade a direct message with her school's Miami address the night before the big dance, even though, according to the Miami Herald, he'd already told her he couldn't make it. As luck would have it, Wade's calendar opened up when the Heat eliminated the Chicago Bulls from the NBA playoffs a night early. According to the paper, Wade called Muxo moments before walking into the prom to tell her to have a good night, but did not tell her that he was outside. If you're thinking this fairy tale sounds way too easy, think again. Muxo reportedly met Wade the year prior at a book signing where she asked him to come to her homecoming dance on a bookmark. Then she went to another signing wearing a customized t-shirt as an invite. Looks like third time's a charm for this lucky lady. I'm just glad that we can make dreams come true, so once again, Wade's world, anyway, doing what we do. Ahmed Tour was just looking to snag a video of actor Zac Efron near the set of Baywatch. That's why Tour said he ran after Efron's car in March 2016, just before he dropped his phone, which shattered on the ground. Efron saw the whole thing. Today reported, Tour remembered. Zac said, dude, did your phone just break? Efron ended up bringing Tour on set and shelling out nearly $1,000 on a new phone for his fan. The actor even gave his new pal a shout out, posting, Dopekid underscore 23 actually smashed his phone while chasing me for a Snapchat. That's dedication. Despite his thorny showbiz reputation, Simon Cowell is actually a pretty nice guy. And on several occasions, he's even supported young fans in their battles against cancer. In fact, Cal was so touched by three-year-old Kean Musgrove's fight with neuroplastoma that he donated 25,000 euros and paid for the family's flight to New York to see medical specialists, according to The Mirror. Cowell has remained in touch with the family over the years and even invited a five-year-old Musgrove to his son Eric's fourth birthday party. Sergeant Scott Moore was serving in Afghanistan when he needed a date to a dance. And he set his sights on A-list actress Mila Kunis, star of That 70s Show and Family Guy. Moore told ABC News, I've seen her in a couple of movies. She's obviously a pretty girl, so I thought she'd be fun. So I picked her. Hey Mila, Sergeant Moore, but you can call me Scott. He continued, I just want to take a moment out of my day to invite you to the Marine Corps Ball on November 18th in Greenville, North Carolina, with yours truly. And to that, Kunis RSVP'd, yes. Moore told ABC, It was a blast. It was a great time. So, yes. It exceeded my expectations. I'm sure. That patriotic soiree clearly made a lasting impression on Kunis too. She told Fox in 2012, we are still in contact. We emailed back and forth and spoke on the phone about a month and a half ago. When Miley Cyrus allowed a 22-year-old guy by the name of Jesse Helt to accept her Video of the Year award for Wrecking Ball at the MTV VMAs in 2014, her critics dubbed it a publicity stunt. But according to the Daily Mail, Cyrus and Helt met when the pop star was touring an LA shelter called My Friend's Place. Helt said in his speech, I am accepting this award on behalf of the 1.6 million runaways and homeless youth in the United States who are starving, lost, and scared for their lives right now. He then revealed he was one of those homeless youth, adding, I've survived in shelters all over the city. I've cleaned your hotel rooms. I've been an extra in your movies. I've been an extra in your life. Silas reportedly went on to pay for an attorney for Helt after he turned himself in on a probation violation in 2014, according to the Mail. She also gave him her Moonman Award, which came in handy in 2016 when he put the trophy up for sale on eBay with a starting bid of $10,000, reportedly slated to help care for his baby per TMZ. They say you can't put a price on friendship, but it seems Miley's kindness certainly changed Helt's life story. 
English singer and songwriter Ed Sheeran's bond with terminally ill teenager Katie Papworth is undeniable. Rather than just visit the 19-year-old in the hospital, the Thinking Out Loud crooner took their friendship to another level by accepting her marriage proposal before a 2014 show in Scotland. Papworth's mom recalled that magic moment, telling the mirror, when she presented the ring, he smiled and said, I suppose I should say yes. OK. Hey, Katie. I'm sending you a lot of love from here. I hope you get well soon. While the two didn't really have a romantic relationship, their connection was clearly a powerful one. According to the Daily Record, Sheeran became, quote, part of the Papworth family. The Grammy winner and his betrothed even held a faux wedding ceremony just a week before Katie's death in November 2014. Sheeran told the news outlet, I still have the ring Katie gave to me and I treasure it. Who wouldn't want to be Taylor Swift's BFF? While the Grammy winner has made headlines for running with a squad of glamorous model pals, Swift has also loved on some lower-profile peeps. In fact, the megastar was so moved by a mashup video created by fan Rebecca Bortnicker that she decided to send Bortnicker a little something in return in 2015. According to USA Today, Swift's bodyguard delivered a box that included a framed piece of art, a Polaroid of the songstress creating that art, a necklace that had belonged to Swift, and $1,989, a play on her album 1989 to put towards Bonitka's student loans. Swift also included a handwritten note telling Rebecca, Hi you, I was thinking about you today and how you've been there cheering me on in the most thoughtful and creative ways. She hoped Rebecca really, 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 really liked the painting she did for her, writing, I'm not a good painter, but I think you're beautiful and positive, even though you're dealing with the stress life brings, so I wanted to make you something. That gesture meant the world to the Kansas Swifty, who is the same age as her idol. Thank you so much, I can't even describe what I'm feeling right now, this is crazy, just thank you so, so, so much. Leave it to Justin Bieber to throw a surprise quinceanera for a fan named Ashley who missed her 15th birthday due to meningitis. The pop star made sure the party, filmed for Fox's Knock Knock Live, was magical from beginning to end. First, Biebs showed up at her home with a selection of dresses from which to choose. He then whisked Ashley off in a limo, yelled out of the window that he loved her and gave her a slow dance she will never forget. I'm dreaming, yes. This is like a fairy tale come true. Well, you're the princess. Yes, I'll be your Prince pen. Charming whenever you want. Needless to say, Bieber made a friend forever. This experience was life-changing. I don't know what I can do to ever thank him. Bieber told Knock Knock Live host Ryan Seacrest that planning the party was special to him, admitting... She was really sick last year, missed a lot of important events in her life, and I just wanted to bless her and, and surprise her and make her life. Friendships between celebrities and average Joes and Janes often make the news and sometimes get cast as publicity stunts. But the circumstances that brought notoriously private Detroit rapper Eminem rushing to the bedside of a terminally ill teenager were seemingly publicized by everyone but Marshall Mathers. Hashtag Get Gage Garmo to Meet Eminem was the social media campaign that connected the Grammy Award winner to Gage Garmo, a young man battling a rare form of bone cancer. According to the Detroit Free Press, a surprise meeting between Eminem and Garmo was arranged at the teen's home by the Michigan-based charity Rainbow Connection in January 2015. A member of the charity recalled the moment Eminem arrived, saying, Gage sat up with a grin on his face. His family hadn't seen their son do that in such a long time. And according to USA Today, Twitter and Facebook lit up with well wishes for the Garmo family and applause for the reclusive rapper who reportedly had jetted in from Atlanta for the quickly arranged visit. Sadly, the very next day, 17-year-old Garmo passed away. Demi Lovato loves to prank her fans, and her fans love her for doing it. In 2014, the Grammy winner surprised her devoted Lovatix when she randomly popped up to join them during filming for her Really Don't Care lyric video, according to MTV News. Her chummy antics, quote, left fans either screaming or literally speechless. And that seems to be the pop star's M.O. In 2015, a superfan named Nathan thought he was filming a fan video for Lovato. He claimed she made him a better person through her music and example, telling Kyle and Jackie O of KISS 1065. You know, she's all about owning your insecurities, loving yourself and just, you know, being who you are. I've 
found a lot of solace in her music. As he spoke about his idol, Lovato made her surprise entrance. You are so gorgeous. Oh, like, thank isn't you. She just... You went from normal to a petrified <laughs> lunatic in one second. After a lot of hugging, Lovato thanked Nathan for all the love. Oh, hello. Thank you. Oh, and let's not forget the time Lovato went undercover as a Lyft driver in Denver, Colorado, carting around unsuspecting fans. I actually met Demi Lovato too one time. Was she nice? Yeah, she was super, super, super nice. Lovato, aka Samantha, a regular old Lyft driver, convinced unsuspecting fans to sing camp rock songs, gossip about her ex, and even play along as she makes fun of her butt chin. Eventually, Lovato ditches the disguise, blows her passengers' minds, and dishes out a whole lot of hugs to compensate for all that sarcasm. I just insulted the hell out of you! I'm so sorry! That's okay! Tom Hanks has a lot of friends. He's got bosom buddies and his good pal Bubba. Heck, he's even friends with a volleyball. Wilson, where are you? Wilson! But have you heard the one about Mr. Ferrari? The following account comes to us courtesy of the Humans of New York series. As the story goes, a cab driver declines a customer's request because he's wrapping up his shift. The cabbie remembered, but then I think about it, and I start feeling bad for the guy, cause hey, I got a conscience. So I call him back to the cab and tell him to hop in. As the trip gets underway, the cabbie eventually realizes his passenger is none other than Oscar-winning actor Tom Hanks. He continued, I look him in the eye and I scream, Wilson! He started laughing hard. He sees that I've got this Ferrari hat on and a Ferrari shirt too, so he starts calling me Mr. Ferrari. The two snap a picture and go their separate ways, but the story doesn't end there. Mr. Ferrari just so happens to ferry some other folks who know Hanks in some way and tells every one of them, tell Mr. Hanks that Mr. Ferrari says hello. Apparently, Hanks got the greeting, because one day, the cabbie received a text inviting Mr. Ferrari to attend Hanks' Broadway show Lucky Guy and to hang out backstage after the performance. Mr. Ferrari recalled, How crazy is that? Because that was me, a lucky guy. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Nicki Swift videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.